I think it was three days I was supposed to leave for Margalef and I went for a nice easy social climb with some friends before going out for dinner and uh, I tore my lumbar call in my hand uh, which was a bit gutting had a scan that was very um, generously given quickly from uh, James at Sheffield Climbing Clinic just to make sure it wasn't a pulley or anything and then had two weeks off went changed my plans went to Greece and had one of the best sport climbing trips I've ever had oh Both amazing did, um, performance and enjoyment so uh, yeah it's quite a nice reminder that if you have an injury or something like that climbing so varied that you can get around it I mean I backed off two routes in a month's worth of climbing at effectively at my hardest just because the whole types were different to what I was expecting to be on uh, which was which is really good I was so psyched on it and it was like a good like I say a good reminder just to stick with it and, and be uh, flexible I'm curious how did you tear your lumbrical on a casual after work climb what happened um, well it's, it ended up being quite an interesting um this will get really geeky, but it's quite an interesting dive into it. And I think it might highlight some stuff for some other people. And uh, I'll start by giving uh, full props to um, Paul Puffy, who's a, is a physio in, in the UK. I've probably just butchered his second name, but uh, he's called The Climbing Physio on Instagram. And he's the most knowledgeable person I've ever met with to do with fingers, injuries, um, performance in the hand. It's just... I, me and him have like some really good geek outs like messaging each other and you know when someone I was messaging him while I was away in Greece talking about rehab and um, for someone just to kind of go oh no now we're onto it I'm really psyched let's let's ask these questions let's do this and that's you couldn't ask for a, a medical professional or someone to be even better than that so a lot of this information is um, from him as well so it came from an underlying issue of um I have quite stiff joints in my fingers now from, from loading for a lot of time, uh, particularly in the dip joints, so the furthest joint away from your palm in my ring fingers. Uh, you could probably see on the screen like I can't close them. You know, like if you tried to close your fingers like this, I can't fully flex them. And one thing that we realized was because of this lack of flexion in that dip joint, uh, if you imagine like you're hanging onto a pocket or you're hanging onto a hold with just your tips, if that joint doesn't flex at all, it's kind of like not really hanging on the edge. It's kind of pushing against it. So if you're trying to hang just the last uh, joint of your finger over an edge, um, and you, hopefully you'll be able to see it if anyone watches this, um, your finger will bend onto that edge and it'll hang underneath it. And if your finger doesn't bend, as you can see my ring finger doesn't now, it won't hang as much. It doesn't so, go all the way straight. Yeah, so it doesn't go straight and this last joint doesn't fold over very much like this one. So what you end up doing is you end up kind of pushing with your lumbrical, your whole hand is trying to close onto that edge. So your hand starts to do more and more of the work but your forearm can't actually work because the tendon won't work properly. So with that in mind, if you imagine joints are too stiff, it's making my hands work even more. I've just been training on comp style routes with athletes much stronger and fitter than me um so my hands have got tighter and tighter and i remember feeling them in um in innsbruck where i'd come off the wall after trying to on-site a climb on their their lead wall and i was like god my hands are more pumped than my forearms are or as pumped and i just felt this soreness in like the pinky side of your palm and what that was was just my, uh, overloading my lumbar cores that were getting tighter and tighter and I think you see this a lot of when people that do too much half crimping, uh, those that do loads of really heavy hands and half crimp, as soon as they split their fingers, their hands feel really stiff and like they're going to tear. So you get a similar effect with that lumbrical becomes really tight and overworked. So then I went to a local wall for this social session and I was very controlled. I warmed up uh, really well, but the, the holds not to the blame the, the wall, but were slightly damp still from they just reset them. Uh, I, I did a move and my pinky slipped off and my hand spun on this hold slightly and just loaded my ring finger more and my pinky stretched out uh, and that kind of shearing effect splitting your fingers apart tore it um, but what was really interesting was that I could climb 
almost at full whack with four fingers on when I went away. And I've learned something about my fingers now, which is going to protect me for the for the next couple of years or into longevity in the future. And it meant that because I had this slight niggle on the trip, uh, I kept asking Maddie to put all the drawers in our roots so that just in case there were some holds on there I couldn't use. So I'd always have the drawers and the roots I wanted to climb and then I'd be able to do them quick until she got impatient with me doing that. But <laughs> it, was, it was a really nice start to the holiday, not having to put drawers in any roots. <laughs> well played. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I'd that's recommend. Like, with your knee injury, just say that you can't carry your pads into the crag. <laughs> yeah, really? See how long you can go away for it. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can only carry this tiny little bifold pad today on yeah, my knee. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey friends, I'm interrupting my own video to tell you guys about follow-up episodes. So the video that you're watching right now is from a follow-up episode that I did on the podcast, which means that the full version is only available for patrons who support the podcast for $5 per month or more. You can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash the nugget climbing. There's a link right there in the description for this video. Again, five bucks per month, super quick and easy to sign up and you can cancel at any time, no questions asked. All right, enjoy the rest of the video. So so what do you do? I mean, we could probably have a whole conversation about this, but are you like actively working on stretching your your fingers yes. and, and working on the joint mobility? How, how are you going about that? And yeah, what's the path forward for you? So um, I'm definitely working on the joint mobility just by literally squeezing your curling your finger over and squeezing your fingernail with your thumb and the back of your finger with your forefinger just trying to create as much flexion there as possible and i've already seen massive gains in that i'm really pushing my fingers um not until like the point of pain but just like holding that position just all the time really regularly trying to create a lot of mobility in those joints and then i'm also stretching the the lumbrical so a good way of stretching a lumbrical is if you curl one of your fingers round fully, and I don't know if you've gone through this before, and then pinch your finger in that sort of flex position. So yeah, it's um, it's a really, it's kind of a weird one, but you're pretty much curling your finger over uh, and pushing on the back knuckle of your hand. Um, and what that does is it takes the stretch out the tendon and it places it all in the hand. And then you slowly straighten your arm. And you'll just feel it if you've got tight lumbricals and tight palms you'll feel it all the way through your palm and it's that kind of really nice dull achy kind of stretch and it's made my hands feel much much better actually um, and then lastly it's just doing um mono lifts with just one pad so particularly on my ring finger that's injured at the moment i'm lifting weights with uh just the last pad touching the mono hold and um in full open position um, and that just forces the flexion and forces it to get stronger with the other fingers curled up. I'm assuming you probably don't want to continue finger training while you're doing this process. Are you just like putting the finger training to the side and just focusing on getting your mobility back? Oh, no, I'm I'm lifting. Yeah, as much as I can. Um, okay. Particularly like those mono lifts. Um, like I've gone from sort of, I couldn't uh, say in like a front three drag, I couldn't barely open the door. Uh, it was so so painful and it was referring into my finger um and i climbed in greece so i had time to recover and then since i've been back i've gotten from sort of mono lifting like two kilos uh on that injured ring finger with fingers not really flexing properly um to sort of like 20 kilos now at the moment and just i'm going to keep pushing that to make it really robust um i've not done much sort of forefinger work but i am still climbing um outside and it's it's a weird injury though i would say it's a weird injury in the injury because as long as uh the whole type is okay i can try quite hard and as soon as i grab something wrong it, it i can't hold on um but there is a lot of theory out there now to to just loading injuries straight away um well after like a 48 hour to a week period off um and just start rebuilding immediately regardless of the injury I know someone was talking about even in full ruptures um, to start loading straight away and that's what they've started doing in their practice and I, I couldn't comment on that but it does show that the body will adapt to whatever it's given so um, not to be too protective about it and I'm, I'm definitely not. Um, if anything I was doing the standard climber thing and not behaving quite enough uh, whilst I was away but 
um you know you gotta enjoy your holiday haven't you